service this morning, I'll just give the announcements. Our offering this morning will be for Crossover Australia. The offering box is in, on the back wall of the church and we pray God will bless the offerings that are given today. And also I'll remind the people that there is a men's breakfast tomorrow at 7.30 and there is an offering, a gift offering of $5 that will go to the church for um, the men's breakfast. So that's the announcements for today. Good morning and welcome to our Good Friday service, or as I like to call it, Holy Friday. We are here this morning to reflect and take our minds back to the cross and the suffering of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the cross where the Prince of Glory died, here is grace, here is love flowing from that wound. So we're going to stand and sing two verses of such love. Let us stand. Son of man. 
it would be better for him if he had not been born. Then Judas, the one who would betray him, said, Surely not I, Lord. Jesus answered, Yes, it is you. Then Jesus went on to commune with his disciples, sharing the bread and the cup. This morning, how precious is it to us that we can remember the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. We have this love feast to share together around the Lord's table this morning as we remember the pain and the suffering of our Saviour. So as we go into our communion time, let us sit and sing two verses of When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. <coughs> Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
Nel me. Nel me. Comes to the Father. But on me. But Jesus had to go the way of the cross. He had to go that way alone. The hymn writer says there was no other good enough to pay the price to sin. He only could unlock the gates of heaven and let us in. Let us pray for the bread and the wine this morning. Father, this morning, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you that he was obedient to death, his in death on a criminal's cross, to shed his precious blood. That blood that has the power to forgive the lives for sinners and bring all who believe in you into relationship with our God. Amen. Jesus sent for the loaf of bread. I'm reading also from Luke 22, verse 19. For the loaf of bread and broke it into pieces and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. As you receive the bread, eat it with thankful heart. After supper, Jesus took another cup of wine and said, This wine is a token of God's new covenant to save you, an agreement sealed with the blood I will pour out for you. As you receive your glasses, we ask you to hold them so we may all drink together in the Christian faith.
this Tuesday a hope of God's love for us. Let us Heavenly Father, we do thank you that we can meet in this way. We do thank you for our Lord Jesus Christ and what he did for us that we can come into a personal relationship with you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Remain seated as the glasses will be collected and we'll sing the last two verses of the nice away. See from his head, his hands and his feet. Sorrow and love. And then we'll move down. We might see that as we sing these last few years. <laughs> Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane and he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to him, said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, he thought, fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken away from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Could you men not keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. He went away a second time and prayed, My father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away once more and prayed the third time, saying the same thing. Then he returned to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look. The hour is near. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. He comes my betrayer. The fact that Jesus repeated these sequence three times, praying and returning to his disciples and speaking to them, clearly indicates that something unusual was going on. Normally Jesus could spend hours communing with his Father, 
but now he yearned for the companionship of his disciples and his friends. The best explanation seems to be that he sensed the beginning of his, the Father's withdrawal from him. Jesus, having set aside the, his glorious God to become one of us, was deeply troubled by the realisation that he would have to go on alone. He had to face all that awaited him with the same emotional makeup, the same bodily structure and the same vulnerability to pain as you or I. The sleeping on the part of the disciples might be understandable to us. It is true they had gone through a very exhausting day and they were tired and it was nearly midnight and they were so sleepy but they must have known something unusual and terrible was happening. Their teacher was in agony. It is expected that friends will stand by one another when they know they are needed. The disciples' lack of genuine sympathy added to our Saviour's anguish. Continue reading in Matthew 26, 47 to 50. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd armed with swords and clubs sent from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus replied, Friend, do what you came for. Then the men stepped forward, seized Jesus, and arrested him. Let us stand and sing three verses of Man of Sorrows. <laughs> Jesus had to die. 
This blind obsession led them to pervert the justice that they were appointed to protect. Even before the trial began, it had been, had been determined that Jesus must die. Mark 14.1 tells us that the chief priests and the teachers of the law were looking for some slow way to arrest and kill Jesus. False witnesses were sought to testify against Jesus. Usually the religious leaders went through an elaborate system of screening the witnesses to ensure justice. No defence for Jesus was sought or allowed. If you are the Christ, tell us. Jesus answered, If I told you, you would not believe me. They all asked him, Are you then the Son of God? He replied, You are right in saying that I am. The trial was conducted at night, which was illegal according to the religious leaders they own law. The high priest put Jesus under oath, then incriminated him for what he said in Matthew 26, 63. Their minds were made up. Jesus was going to die. Jesus was not, never going to get a fair trial. Matthew 26, 69 to 75. Peter disowns Jesus. Now Peter was sitting out in the courtyard and a servant girl came to him. You also were with Jesus of Galilee, she said. But he denied it before them all. I don't know what you're talking about, he said. Then he went out to the gateway where another servant girl saw him and said to the people there, This fellow was with Jesus of Nazareth. He denied it again with an oath. I don't know the man. After a little while, those standing there went up to Peter and said, Surely you are one of them. Your accent gives you away. Then he began to call down curses on himself. He swore to them, I don't know the man. Immediately a rooster crowed. Then Peter remembered the words Jesus had spoken. Before the rooster crows, you will miss only three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. Peter, did, Peter the disciple who at Philippi had so nobly confessed that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the living God, in Matthew 16, 16, added still another weight to the Saviour's Savior suffering. Earlier when Peter had so brashly declared his courage, Jesus had warned him, I tell you the truth, today, yes, tonight, before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. In spite of his bravado, he, like the rest of the disciples, fled when Jesus was arrested. Yet, Peter couldn't abandon Jesus completely, keeping a safe, a safe distance so he wouldn't be identified as a disciple of Jesus. But we have read that Peter did not did as just as Jesus had said to him. He denied Jesus three times. When Jesus ended Peter's life, this plain fisherman became a new person with new goals and new priorities. He did not become a perfect person. We may wonder what Jesus saw in Peter who was the rock, impulsive Peter, we, who didn't act like a rock much of the time. But when Ch Jesus chose his followers, he wasn't looking for perfect people. He was looking for real people. He chose people who could be changed by his love, like you and me. We may wonder what Jesus sees in us when he calls us to follow him. But we know Jesus accepted Peter in spite of all his failures. Peter went on to do great things for God. We too need to keep following Jesus even when we fail. Remember Peter often spoke without thinking. He was brash and impulsive. Isn't that just like we are sometimes? We don't think when we, we say something, we, we, we're so impulsive sometimes. And that's just how Peter was. And we're going to stand and sing three, two verses of My Lord, What Love Is This. <coughs> Jesus before Pilate. Meanwhile, Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? It is as you say, Jesus replied. 
When he was accused by the chief priest and the elders, he gave no answer. And Pilate asked him, Don't you hear the testimony they are bringing against you? But Jesus made no reply, not even for the single charge, to the great amazement of the governor. Now it was the governor's custom at the feast to release a prisoner chosen by the crowd. And at that time they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when the crowd had gathered, Pilate asked them, Which one do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus who is called Christ? For he knew it was out of envy that they had handed Jesus over to him. While Pilate was sitting at the judge's seat, his wife sent him a message, Don't have anything to do with that innocent man for I have suffered a great deal today in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus executed. Which of the two do you want me to release to you? asked the governor. Barabbas, I answered. What shall I do then with Jesus who is called Christ? Pilate asked. They all answered, crucify him. Why? What crime has he committed, asked Pilate? But they shouted all the louder, Crucify him! When Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but that instead an uproar was started, he took water and washed his hands in front of the crowd. I am innocent of this man's blood, he said. It is your responsibility. All the people answered, Let his blood be on us and on our children. Then he released Barabbas to them. But he had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers mocked Jesus. Then the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him and then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand then they knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hail, King of the Jews, they said. They spit on him and took the staff and struck him on the head again and again. After they had mocked him, they took off the robe and put on his own clothes. Then they led him away to crucify him. Remain seated and we'll sing two verses of Were You There when they crucified my Lord. <coughs>
but perhaps the team would have conducted several crucifixions that week already. The first time they had seen a crucifixion, they may have been moved, but now they were callous and emotionless. All the suffering Jesus was going through on the cross, in love he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. Matthew 27, 32-44, the crucifixion of Jesus. As they were going out, they met a man from Cyrene named Simon, and they forced him to carry the cross. They came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. There they offered Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall, but after tasting it, he refused it. When, he, when they had crucified him, they divided up his clothes by casting lots, and sitting down, they kept watch over him there. Above his head they placed the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two robbers were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, You who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself, come down from the cross, if you are the Son of God. In the same way, the chief priests and the teachers of the law and the elders mocked him. He saves others, they said, but he can't save himself. He's the king of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the son of God. In the, name, in the same way, the robbers who were crucified with him also heaped insults on him. We're going to listen to a DVD called Only See the Dawn. Now you can either read the words as the girl sings it or just close your eyes and listen to the words. But let us reflect on the beautiful words of this song. Thank you, Andrew. The Death of Jesus From the sixth hour until the ninth hour, Darkness came over all the land. About the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama the back fly, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing there heard this cry, they said, He's calling for Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran and got a sponge. He filled it with wine, vinegar, put it on a stick, and offered Jesus to drink. The rest of them said, Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to save him. And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. At that moment, the curtain in the temple was torn in two from top to the bottom. The earth shook, the rocks split, the tombs broke open, the bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. They came out of the tombs, and after Jesus' resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many people. When the centurions and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and all that had happened, they were terrified and exclaimed, Surely he was the Son of God. Many women were there, watching from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee to care for his needs. While Jesus was hanging on the cross, he must have looked like a, a loser, a battered and bloody victim. Although he spoke agonising words from the cross, he did not come down when he was challenged to do so. He remained nailed to the tree until the moment he died. He hung there as saviour of the world. He had been tempted, tested in every conceivable way, yet was without sin. To his sinless life and miracles, Jesus had shown his mastery over the devil and all the forces of evil. He had tied up the strong man. Matthew 12, verse 29. Yes, the devil is still a powerful enemy and has not conceded defeat, but he has been defeated. So when we submit to God and resist the devil, we can put him to flight. Jesus' final utterance from the cross were the words of a conqueror. 
After three hours, he triumphantly cries out, It is finished. He knew he had suffered the desolation of hell and had emptied the cup of God's wrath against sin. He could now allow his spirit to depart from his body. In Gethsemane, Jesus had said that if he had asked his father, more than 12 legions of angels would have been at his disposal. The power to escape this dark hour was available to him. But Jesus would not come down. He could not come down. Love held him on the cross. Matthew 27, 57 to 61. As evening approached, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who had himself become a disciple of Jesus. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body, and Pilate ordered that it be given to him. Joseph took the body, wrapped it in a clean linen cloth, and placed it in his own new tomb that he had cut out of the rock. He rolled a big stone in front of the entrance to the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were sitting there opposite the tomb. We will never understand the suffering that Jesus went through for us at Calvary. But we know he loved us so much that he was willing to die for us. Strictly speaking, Jesus was sentenced by Pilate, a Gentile governor. He was executed by the Roman soldiers. Yet because of our sins, we all had a hand in killing Jesus as part of God's own plan to save us from our sins. To receive, and in, to receive and enjoy the eternal benefits of that salvation, we must believe and trust what God did for us on the cross. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. And my friends, that means you and me. Two men side by side, their Messiah. Two choices for all to make, humility or pride. Our hearts must decide which side of the cross will you take. This is very challenging as we turn our thoughts this day to the one who gave his life, that we might have eternal life. But this is not where the story ends. Hallelujah. But let's come back on Sunday to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. Amen. We're going to close our service by singing Jesus keep me in the cross. Let's stand. Remain standing for prayer benediction.
we just say thank you for the sacrifice you made for each one of us at Calvary and for your wonderful love and amazing grace. And we thank you for that blessed hope we have in Jesus Christ. And now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I trust you will have a lovely day and if you're free, please come back to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord on Sunday.